are listening to the Perspective Podcast. This is a space for you who are longing to come back home, deeper into your own center and your own truth. This is a space for you who are longing to deepen the relationship to yourself and to others. My name is Madeleine Mufjad and in this space I invite you to explore conversations that in different ways touch us upon the human experience. And I'm here to invite new perspectives. Hi and welcome Bruce Lipton to the Perspective Podcast. I am so delighted to be here, you know, because uh, the world is in such a wonderfully strange place and people just are looking at it with like, ah, oh, it's scary. And I go, no, no. If you understand what's going on, like, yeah, this is great. And just go, how could, how could scary and great be the same? I say, well, if you understand the science that we're going to talk about, mm. then you understand that this is one of the most important times in human civilization is right now. Mm. So it's like, it's exciting yeah so let's just be excited to be part of it and i think that's beautiful also like to hear your perspectives and dive deeper into those perspectives that you have to share since like you mentioned i think the world is at a place where there's a lot of scarcity and fear and a lot of like darkness coming coming up right now in these times so i think it's so beautiful to have you here today bruce and <laughs> and and also i do want I, I do feel like there's so much i want to dive into with you uh and I, I do feel like before diving into the juicy stuff, I would love to to check in with you for the listeners yes. and for me to 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 hear you. How how is your heart today, Bruce? How is it to be Bruce? Lee I am today? a happy. I am a happy, healthy boy. Uh, I'm going to be eighty in this coming year, so uh, uh, I, I have to say maybe I only have twenty or thirty years left. So I'm going to keep enjoying every day. Because every day you miss is that you don't get credit for for not having a good day. You don't get any money back. So uh, uh, it reminds me of a, a very sad tale. My mother married late in life a second time, and she married a man by the name of Phil. And he was sort of a an angry man about things. He ever he never had anything nice to say, you know. And I thought, well, I don't have to live with him. My mother likes him. <sighs> That's her issue. And but here's a story that he lived to be ninety seven. And he was dying of cancer. My mother took care of him at home, didn't send him to a hospital. And in the last week of life, he he wasn't really there. He was like gone somewhere. And then about two days before he died, all of a sudden his eyes opened up and he was there and he looked at my mother and he said, I didn't have any fun. Mm. 97 years old, going to die in two days and come to the realization that his whole life of 97 years, he didn't have any fun. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go the other way because I went my last moment because it's like, hey, that was great. Thanks, man. <laughs> what a ride. <laughs> yeah, well, I want so people to understand that this attitude that I have is... Um, it wasn't my whole life. No, no. For the first 40 plus years of my life, it, it was like conventional people working, struggling, trying to do good, trying to find relationships that weren't working and, and, you know, and everything it was like, and then the science that I was working on uh, revealed the nature of what life is all about. And it was so completely different because as a medical professor, I, I tell people, oh, genes control your life. You're like programmed and whatever genes you get, that's your life. And, I, you know, when we teach that and this, I want people to understand because they learned it. Oh, the DNA controls everything. I go, we were teaching you to be a victim. I said, what do you mean? I said, well, as far as you know, you didn't pick the genes you came with. I said, can you change them if you don't you don't like the character? Can you change them? I go. No. And then we add, oh, genes turn on and off by themselves. And I say, now put all that together. And I say, what does it mean? It says we become a victim of our genetics, a victim of our heredity. People see things running in their family like heart disease or diabetes or cancer. And I say, oh, my goodness, there are genes and I could get these genes. And oh, my goodness, I could die from these things. I go, whoa, <laughs> that's what people believe. They believe mm. that the genes that they were passed down to them have control over them, and therefore they, they, they have they're powerless. 
And that's mm -hmm. why then we seek what? Pharmaceutical company. Oh, pharmaceutical company. I have, I have trouble with my genes. Can you fix that? And it's like, they'll be very happy to try. Mm. And they'll charge you everything they can. <laughs> exactly. And it doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> it works because the new science that changed my whole life was a science that showed that genes are, are not controlling themselves. That's a, that's a false statement. A gene cannot turn on and off. No, a gene is a blueprint. Just like you're building a house, you have a blueprint. Uh, I say, go to an architect's office. She's working on a blueprint. And you ask her, is your blueprint on or off? And she'll look at you like, what are you, crazy? It's a blueprint. There's no on and off. Exactly. A gene is a blueprint. That's no on and off. Mm. But there's an architect. I go, oh, I said, what's the, who's the architect that controls my gene blueprints? The mind. Then I go, what does that mean? I say, we are sending information to ourselves about what we see and what we experience and what we believe. And the cells are adjusting to that belief. And I said, what do you mean adjusting? I said, our thoughts change our genetics <laughs> and our thoughts can rewrite the genetic activity that you have. And I go, so why is that important? And I said, well, you're the one that controls the thoughts. And if you understand that, then all of a sudden I say, you're the one that controls your genetics. But if you don't know anything about it, then you bought stories like, oh, genes turn on and off. I go, no, no. I say, why is this the most important thing I can say today? And the answer is because you are the power that controls your health, your character, your life, your joy, your sadness, whatever it is you're experiencing. It's not something that's coming outside and coming into you it's you putting inside it and expressing out mm -hmm. and this you go oh wow that sounds new age that's new age i go no no <laughs> physics quantum physics is the most truthful the most valid science on planet earth quantum physics i go yeah so what i go principle number one principle number one quantum physics the mind is the creator of our reality. Boom. I go, I go, what? <laughs> I mean, that's since 1927? I go, yeah, but the public has no understanding of this. Because you ask anybody about quantum physics, and they go, oh, I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know nothing. And I go, well, that's a problem. Because physics is the science of how the universe works. <laughs> and the old science is the one that we got from Isaac Newton. That science separated the material reality from the invisible reality. And, uh, and so what was material was physical body. What was not material was mind, God, and spirit. And so science under Newton said, well, don't worry about the invisible stuff. That's it. It's the physical stuff. And that's why our biology, our health, our life experiences are always turned back on, we're just physical beings. I go, no, no, listen very carefully. We are spiritual beings and we play into a body and the body is a virtual reality suit. When your consciousness, which is your spirit, uh, uh it is an energy quantum physics <laughs> it's an energy that plays through the body uh, when, when i saw this and understood it because of my experiments with the cells showing the environment was controlling the cells and that the mind was creating that environment i said oh my god if you understand this and you can create the life that you want well i wanted to tell a lot of people about the science so yeah. as soon as I understood the science, I said, people, let me tell you the secret of creating this most beautiful life. And, the, and back in those days, they looked at me and they go, you know, Lipton, for a guy who says, you know, this, your life doesn't look so good. And I went, oh, I'm talking about the science, but I was not using the science. I was just saying, oh, that's how it works. But I, and then I realized, well, 
If it sounds so good, why am I not using it? So I said, oh, I have to change the way I'm thinking. I have to change the way I, I'm experiencing. I said, yeah. So guess what? I changed. And guess what? I'm going to tell you this, a simple truth from science. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. People think you die and then you have a chance to go to heaven. I want to tell you from this new science and quantum physics and all of the stuff that's happening. No, no, you you don't die and go to heaven. You were born into heaven. I go, what do you mean? This place is heaven. Look at look at the war, the violence, the crime, the sickness, the destruction. This isn't heaven. I go, no, that's your manifestation. You're creating that. I said, what do you mean? I wouldn't create that. I want to create the beautiful, lovely life. I go, but it turns out. Our life is not controlled by our conscious mind, which is wishes and desires. Our life is controlled by this bigger subconscious mind, which is programs. I go, yeah, the subconscious is like an autopilot. Meaning what? I say, well, if I'm busy doing something like thinking and driving the car, I go, where's the problem? I say, thinking is looking inside. You know, Madeleine, I say, uh, what's today? Today's Wednesday. I say, tell me what you're doing on Friday. And if you, you can tell me, I bet you can tell, you don't have to tell me, but I bet you can tell me. I say, oh, where did you get that information? Is it written on your desk right now? No. Is it, where is, where is it? And I go, it's inside your mind. So when I ask you a question, your conscious mind had to go inside and say, what am I doing? What am I doing? I'm, you know, and I go, so what was the point? <gasps> The conscious mind, which is looking out when you were thinking, had to go inside because the thought is inside. So let's say you're driving a car and your conscious mind, yeah, I'm going to drive here and here's how fast I'm I'm paying attention, I'm driving. And then let's say you have a passenger in the car and you start talking to your passenger. Oh, yeah, blah, 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 blah. And then you look out the window. And you realize for the last five minutes, you haven't even paid attention to the road. I go, what what do you mean? I say, well, I say, tell me what your conversation was about. You go, oh, we talked about this and this. And then my question is, and what was on the road while you were having that conversation? The answer is, I don't know. I say, but the car is still going. The driving didn't kill anybody. And I say, who was driving the car? Because you weren't paying attention. I go, the subconscious knows how to drive a car. It's a program. And when the mind, the conscious mind said, wait, I'm going inside to think, the subconscious grabbed the wheel. And the subconscious is a million times more powerful a computer than the conscious mind. So guess what? It's a better driver than you are anyway. And so the whole point was this. I say, what was the conversation? You say, this and this. And I say, what did you, what was happening in the world? You go, I didn't see it. And I go, well, guess what? That's 95% of the day. 95% of the day, you are not paying attention because 95% of the day is the time you are thinking. What am I doing? Where am I going? Where was I? What happened? What's next? All these thoughts. I say, yeah, but while you're having them, you're not looking out the window. I go, oh. I said, well, then who's controlling my life? I, ah, the subconscious. It knows how to walk. It knows how to talk. It knows how to drive a car. These are programs. You learned them. So I go, oh, point. My conscious mind has wishes and desires. My subconscious mind has programs. My wishes and desires are not the same as programs. Because the programs, I'll tell you where you got them from your mother and your father and your family and your community before age seven. Okay. You know, I'm talking a lot. Should I keep going or should I shut up for a minute? You can keep going, Bruce. (laughs) I just want to make the reason why. Let's give a reason why, because otherwise this is new agey stuff. The brain is a computer. It is actually a, a computer that humans haven't been able to duplicate yet, but it's a computer. And I go, so why is that important? I said, because it has the same functions as any computer, like the one in your house. I go, why is that important? I say, when we used to buy a computer, it, there were no programs. I go, so I buy a brand new computer and I push start and the screen lights up. It's booted. And I go, now do something. 
and you go I, I said well you got you got a brand new computer what do you mean you can't do anything oh first I have to put the programs in the computer then I could use the computer I go ah human brain computer before you can use it you have to have programs and then you can engage the programs you came here with no knowledge of anything and all of a sudden you have to have a program to be a member of the family you have to know how to be a member of the community you say there are rules a thousand rules I go how's the child going to learn a thousand rules in the first seven years of your life the brain computer is not unconscious it's not conscious and thinking for the first seven years it's called the brain function is called theta it's a, a just below consciousness and I say yeah so what and I say theta is hypnosis I go, I go what does that mean I say you don't have to read a book and learn how to be a member of community just watch and download so as a uh, as a boy in my family uh, generally you look at your father and you watch his behavior and you say that's what boys do if you're a girl generally you watch what your mother is doing and that's what girls do and I go what do you mean I said the programs of how to be a father how to be a mother you just download it by watching them so I say then my program of being a boy or a man was programmed by watching somebody else I go yeah my father you know and I go so what's the point he didn't have the same desires and wishes I have. He has a whole different life. As a matter of fact, my father and mother had a dysfunctional relationship. I go, what does that mean? Well, they weren't a real couple. <laughs> I say, so what? And I said, well, who behavior did I copy? My father's. I go, so what? And I go, 95% of our lives. And if I didn't say it before, I got to emphasize it again. 95 percent of your life is not coming from the wishes and desires conscious mind it's coming from the programs so that meant how come for 40 years i couldn't find a relationship that would last and the answer was because i was using the behavioral program i downloaded from my father that was dysfunctional did i see it when i was playing these bad programs i say nope why because i was thinking 95 percent of the time my father's behavior was playing and i didn't see it so in, in my lectures I, I give this one story you have a friend and and you know your friend's behavior very well for a friend and you know your friend and you know your friend's parent and one day you see your friend has the exact same behavior as the parent so you say to your friend hey bill you're just like your father and then I say, back away from Bill, because I know what Bill's going to say, and you heard it. He's going to say, how can you compare me to my father? I'm nothing like my father. And you've been, experienced it. You've heard other people say this, and, you, and I go, why? Because he downloaded the behavior from his father, okay? It works 95% of the day, but he's the one that doesn't see it. I say, why? Because why is it playing? And the answer is because he's thinking and not paying attention. I go, ah, that's why you don't see your own behavior 95% of the day. But that own behavior isn't even yours because that behavior you're playing from the program, the hard drive in the computer, downloaded programs, hard drive, subconscious. Those programs didn't come from you. They came from other people. Are you living the life you want? Or are you living the life you have been programmed? And the answer is, no, only 5% of the day are we living the life that we want to live. The rest of our life is a program. And we don't see it. All we see is the result of the program. I go, what does that mean? I say, well, let's say you're finding life isn't working for you. And I go, so what? And I say, that person who doesn't know what we just said, because they didn't know they were playing a program, say oh my failure is because that person did this and that person did that and they blame everybody for why their life isn't any good and i go no they're like bill they don't see their own behavior which caused the life to be this way and i go so what does that mean and here comes the answer well these are programs in the hard drive which is called the subconscious mind i go so what and i say you can change a program I go, you can, 
well yeah if you can't change the program this is a very crummy life <laughs> you know I don't want that I said well how do you change the program well we'll talk about that in a minute but let's say you can change the program mm. I said well if I can change the program what do you want to change I said why don't you put your wishes and your desires that your vision and make that the program I go so why is that important I say but then 95% of the day, you will always be going toward your wishes and desires without you even thinking about it. Why? You haven't been thinking about it up to now anyway. And if, if you put the program you want in, then you're not going to follow the program that other people put in. And if you put in a program like I have, heaven on earth, mm. joy, and, love, all that stuff. Mm. And, and guess that, what? And, 95 95% of the day, I'm I'm manifesting behavior that's bringing all that into me. So guess what? I am living heaven on earth. Oh. And, and, and the important part about this is anybody can do it, but almost nobody knows what I just said, that they're not creating their life with their wishes and desires conscious mind. They don't know that their life is coming from the program that other people gave them. And they just look because they can't see it they all of us feel like victims i wanted this and it's not happening these people messed me up i go we messed ourselves up change the program yeah and i'm so curious to dive deeper into your answers and perspectives on how we can do to change these programs and i assume that the listeners are with me and excited to get oh, to I don't want the it. answers no, let's, don't, let's but, don't give away that secret. yeah exactly let's keep it no but, <laughs> but so but so one thing that i'm that i'm curious about when i hear you talk about and and also not only when i hear you talk but also when i look at you on the other side of the screen here um, I can really see like a light in your eyes, Bruce. And it's beautiful yeah. also to both like I can see that, but I also hear you mention that you're turning 80 in a few, I don't know, soon. Um, yeah. and, and that you're happy, you're healthy and you're living a vibrant life. Um, and you also mentioned that it has, hasn't always been that way for you. And so that makes yeah. me wonder, uh, and I'm happy to hear you share, like what do you think has been like some of the most important programs that you have had to change in order to experience the health and the, the vibrant life that you're living today yes there are, there are two things uh, and uh, they're both related to my research years and years ago uh, 50 50 years ago I did some research with what are called stem cells which are the inside your body uh, uh, and I said, what are stem cells? Well, they're called embryonic cells. I said, what do you mean? I said, because your body is a community of 50 trillion cells, but cells are dying every minute. You lose a million cells, boom, old cells, skin coming off, hair falling out, blood cells being replaced. And I go, but if you're losing millions of cells every you know minute, how long can you live? And I go, well, if you don't have anything to replace those cells, then you're going to die very quickly. But inside the community, we have stem cells, embryonic cells, and their job is to replace anything that's lost. So that, what does it mean? It says, I lose a million cells, I make a million cells every day, okay? So I go, these are stem cells, they're embryonic cells, and I put them in a culture dish and I cultured them, and uh, I ended up with what's called cloning cells, meaning I put one cell in the dish only, just one cell, and it divides every 10 hours. First there's one, then there's two, then there's four, eight, doubling. And at the end of the week, 30,000 cells in the Petri dish. And I go, so what? I go, they're all genetically the same because they came from one parent. So I have 30,000 genetically identical cells. I put them, split them up, three dishes, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, all dishes genetically identical. And here's the secret of life. You grow cells in a fluid, a liquid called culture medium, growth medium. I say, what is it? I go, it's the laboratory version of blood, growing cells in blood, okay? I say, so in the lab, we make culture medium. So I look at what's blood made out of, then I make it in a lab, a, 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 a version, you know, synthetic. I put it together, make it. But I can change some of the chemistry. So I make three different culture media, slightly different chemistry. And so in one dish, I put culture medium one and the other dish culture medium two and the third dish culture medium three, different culture medium. In dish one, the cells form muscle. In dish two, 
the cells form bone. In dish three, the cells form fat cells. What controls the fate of the cells? Why should it be muscle, bone, and fat? The answer is this. They were all genetically the same. So I said, then what was the difference? The chemistry of the culture medium, the environment, controlled the behavior and the genetics. I go, oh, that's an interesting experiment. Yeah, well, that's the new science called epigenetics. The gene didn't determine what happened. It was the environment that determined what happened. And I go, so that's interesting. I go, now let's take one big step. When you look in the mirror and see yourself and you say, oh, one single person. I go, well, you might be one person, but you're actually a community of 50 trillion cells. So guess what? You're a skin-covered Petri dish inside 50 trillion cells. I go, yeah. And guess what? The original culture medium. I go, the original? I go, yes, blood. I say, it's the chemistry of the blood, the culture medium, that controls the genetics and the behavior. I go, yeah, it's just the same as in the plastic dish, same in the skin dish. The cells are responding to the environment inside the body, blood. So I say, the chemistry of the blood is controlling our genetics. I go, yes. And then comes the big question. What controls the chemistry of the blood? I go, huh? the brain is the chemist that puts the chemistry into the blood. Then the next and biggest and most important question, what chemicals should the brain put into the blood? And the answer, and it's the most important answer in the world, whatever you are seeing, whatever you are believing, that vision in your mind is turned into chemistry by the brain. That's the job of the brain. Translate the picture into chemistry that matches the picture. So if you have love in your mind, you release chemicals of love, dopamine, pleasure, oxytocin, bonding with your mate, growth hormone. I go, yes, that's why when people are in love, they're healthy. They glow. Oh, look, they're so in love. See how healthy they are. I go, that's not an accident. That's chemistry. The chemistry of love gives you vitality. I said, what if I have a picture of fear? I go, oh, that's not the same chemistry. <laughs> picture of fear, the brain puts in stress hormones and hormones that affect the growth of nervous system and hormones that affect the consciousness and a fear. I go, oh, different chemistry. I say, yep. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's the chemistry that causes stress. I go, so the more fear you're under, the more chemistry of stress. And I go, chemistry of stress shuts off the growth. Chemistry of stress, listen to this, shuts off the immune system. And I go, you mean when I'm afraid of something, my immune system is not working well? I go, yes. And that's what happened during COVID. Mm. Everybody was so afraid they were going to die. They lived in fear. Oh my God, I'm going to get the COVID. I'm going to, I go, the fear shut off the immune system. The fear is what caused the epidemic. I say, people die. And I go, I know people die, but they didn't die from the virus. They were already sick before the virus got there. Most of them, 70%, very obese. Some 70% again, uh, people under stress, okay? Uh, people who had diabetes, people who had heart disease before COVID. But then when they got COVID, their immune system wasn't working really well. And that's why they got sick. Very important point because we're facing the new COVID is coming. I go, stop. 40% <laughs> of the people when they finally did testing, 40% of those that tested positive didn't even know they had the virus. I go, what does that mean? I say, they were healthy. Healthy people did not have a problem. Unhealthy people had a problem. Did the medical people ever come out and say, you can avoid having a problem by being healthy. Take care of your health. No, no. We have a vaccine. We're coming. We have a vaccine. I go, what about being healthy? Ah, man. I go, wait, wait, 
What's the point? Mm. The world is in a crisis today, outside of our body, inside of our body. I say, why? Because the programs that are running our life are self-destructive. We're destroying the environment in which we live. We are the environment. If the environment goes, we can't be here either. So all of a sudden it's like, hey, wake up, wake up. <laughs> we are behaving in a way that's destructive. And I go, what do you mean? I go, here's a fact of science, a fact. If we wanted to live today, just all the world, just today, just say today, we just want to live the way we are living. It takes 1.6 planet Earth to provide for that. I go, yeah, but we only have one planet Earth. I go, yeah. What about that 0. 0.6? We don't have that 0. 0.6. What's the point? <laughs> the answer is we are not sustainable. We cannot live on this planet because we're using more resources than the planet can give us. I said, what does that mean? We're facing extinction. And science has been telling the public this for 20 years. I even have a book on it called Spontaneous Evolution. 20 years. I go, what are we concerned about? Extinction? No, we're concerned about, oh, race, gender, religious problems, social problems, economic problems. I go, those are nothing. You're facing extinction. <laughs> For what? not living in harmony with the planet and therefore not living in harmony with us because we are the planet and this is the wake-up call yeah and i'm so excited about it just i'll finish uh, just why am i so excited about it because i was living the life that most people live struggle work fix do enjoy a little bit blah 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 and now i live the life that was like really <laughs> I can have this? Yes, you can have this. I say, how can you have it? I say, change the program. Mm. And when you change the program, oh, you want me to talk about programs later? Uh, we'll do, okay. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Um, um, something that, I'm, that, I, that, that I find interesting when I hear you talk about how we like human beings are actually destroying the planet that we're living on um and and i assume then that there's a lot of like collective beliefs of course like we as individuals have a lot of uh, programs but then then when it comes to the collective and society as a whole what do you think are some of the like most maybe dangerous beliefs as, ah, a, as a society that we need to change in order to survive great question great mm. question because there's an answer and the answer is this. The biggest problem with today's society is that it's belief in Darwinian theory of evolution. Go, what the hell is it? I said, let me summarize what people summarize Darwin theory. Survival of the fittest in the struggle for life. That's the summary. Survival of the fittest in the struggle for life. I said, what does that mean? We have to go out and struggle. Number one, because life is a struggle. It said that. And then you have to be the fittest. I said, what does that mean? You have to be better than the other person. I said, what do you mean? It's a competition. We're out there. Who's the winner? Who's the loser? Why? I don't want to be the loser. I want to survive. Oh, then be the fittest. How do you do that? Well, in today's world, how much money do you have? <laughs> Why? Because energy and money are the same thing. If you have money, you have energy to do things. If you don't have any money, you have no energy to do things. So I say, so how is that working out? I say, 1% of the population has the money that 99% don't have. I go, uh-oh, why? Can't survive. That competition is killing us, that we're competing, and that we look at losers as, oh, look, a million people die of starvation in Africa, and we go, oh, that's just, that's life. I go, that's not life. You're letting those people die. Why? You're throwing away food. You're throwing away food. I go, well, uh, 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 blah, blah, blah. I go, no, no, blah, blah, blah. It's a reality. We believe in competition. And competition, the way we see it in today's world, is winner, loser. I go, well, so what does that mean? It says, well, if you're the winner, good for you. If you're the loser, I'm sorry. And I go, what does that mean? You're lost. I go, why? Because you believe that it was competition that created our evolution. I go, no. A garden is not competition. I go, what do you mean? 
Everything in the garden works together to create a garden. They all work together. It's harmony. I go, and we are like a virus in the garden. We're destroying the harmony of the planet. And the garden is falling apart. That's where the extinction is. We can no longer do this anymore. And I go, so what's the point? I say, it wasn't competition. That is the point. The point of evolution is cooperation. It's the complete opposite of the way we are living on the planet today. Cooperation means supporting each other. Dolphins. If a dolphin is sick and they have to breathe air because they're mammals, they have to come up to the surface. But if they're sick and they're too weak and they can't do this, other dolphins will get underneath and lift the sick dolphin up to the top so it could breathe. That's called community. If there is something going wrong in your neighborhood, but the people come together and work in harmony, that's called community. But our world is not living in community. It's living in competition. Who's got what? Where's it going? Who's got nothing? Who cares? I go, oh, you can't have this. A human body, listen, here's the, the human body is a model. I say, what does it mean? If you're living in harmony, then the cells in your body are in harmony. And harmony is health. Okay? But if this harmony is all around you, then it's also going on inside your body. And disharmony in a community breaks a body community, which is called disease. Everyone thinks, oh, disease is due to genes. No. Less than 1%, less than 1% of disease on the entire planet has anything to do with genes. It has to do with 90% stress. Stress causes heart disease. Stress causes diabetes. Stress causes uh, 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 the obesity that we have. Stress causes all these problems. Those are symptoms, and we make them the problem. I said, no, they're a symptom of a problem. You're trying to solve the problem by looking at the symptom. I go, no, it, whatever happened below your head was controlled by what was above. <laughs> you change your consciousness and you change the community because it changes the chemistry. If you're living in love, then you're very, you have a no, whole new world. I go, you know what? The movie, The Matrix, which most people have seen, is not science fiction. It's a documentary. I go, what do you mean? Well, the premise of the story is we've all been programmed. I go, well, that's the fact of life. Yeah, the first seven years, everybody's programmed. I go, so what? So I say, then you are living the program. I say, that's what the movie said. I go, yes, we are. And then they said, you could take a red pill. Oh, and what happens? You get out of the program. Okay, folks, listen to this. Most of you have already taken that red pill with the amazing results. I go, we did? When was that? when you fell in love, when you fell in love. I go, what do you mean? I said, your life was blah, 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 blah. And then you meet this person 24 hours later. Oh, life is so beautiful. Everything is beautiful. Life is so wonderful. I go, what happened? You were blah, blah, blah. And then 24 hours, now you're living heaven on earth, which it is heaven on earth, the honeymoon, heaven on earth. I go, how did you switch from blah, 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 and then experience heaven on earth in 24 hours? And the answer is this. The red pill in this case is we stop thinking. I go, what do you mean? I say, you stay in the present moment. You stay what is called mindful. I go, what do you mean? This person just came into your life. If you're thinking, you're going to disconnect. So you want to be there. I look, oh, look. Where I go, what happened? You stop thinking. I said, then what does that mean? You stop playing the program for the first time in your life. And the moment you stop playing the program, then the creator of your life, your wishes and desires became what controlled your life. Your conscious controlled your life, not your program. I said, what did your conscious create? Honeymoon. Life was beautiful. Life was great. And I go, that was there all the time. It was your program that you couldn't play that play program because as long as you're playing the program, you have the life you have. But when you fell in love, take, that's the red pill. You stop playing the program. What happened the moment you stopped playing the program, your life created heaven on earth? And I go, well, you could have that your whole life. But he stuck to the... <laughs> yeah, oh. go ahead, darling. 
no but i mean is that really true for all people like i mean I've, I've witnessed a lot of people falling in love and then all of a sudden the programs become so intense that they don't manage to stay in intimacy because they no, all because... of a sudden detach or you know all these things yeah well here's the reason why the programs have bad behaviors in them okay but when you fell in love you didn't play the program anymore your partner only saw what your wishes and desires that's what we wanted I said, but what? where's the program? I said, no, as long as you're not thinking, you're not playing the program. You're Now you're in creating, okay? I said, that's called the honeymoon. I said, how long does it last? And I go, listen to this. Once you have to start thinking a lot, what happens when you start thinking? Like, I have a job. I have responsibilities. I have to do things. So it's like, I can't just be in honeymoon. I have to do life. I go, the moment you start thinking, the program plays. I said, but your partner never saw the negative programs because you never played them. They fell in love with what? Your wishes and your desires and your conscious mind, which you were manifesting. That's what they fell in love with. They never saw the negative programming. But the more you start thinking, the more the negative programs start showing up and they look at you and go, who are you? Where did that come from? And that's when the honeymoon ends. <laughs> like that is the thing. So what was the point? That takes us back to the same thing. It's the program that take away the power from our life. And so what did I do? I rewrote the program. What's my program? I love my life. I love everything. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. I don't, you know, it doesn't mean that my whole life works out exactly the way I want, but you know what? In the old days, I would be upset when it didn't work out and I would work harder or get aggravated and I'm going to make it work and all that. And I go today, I guess what? It's not working. Okay. What else? All of a sudden it's like no anger, no, no, you know, hurry, fix. Nah, nah everything's okay. It's working. And I'm still here. Yeah. Which I and really I, love. Mm. And I think it's, it's, it's interesting to hear your thoughts because I know there's a lot of people out there who talk about this idea of like, emo like how to, sort of sit with our emotional inner landscape like allowing it, uh, like anger allowing all these maybe fearful or like feelings that we might consider as negative to also flow through the body you know um and so i'm curious to hear what's your perspective on that is that necessary no, or no, you... You know, the, the hell with that <laughs> there, uh, I, I, there's an interesting movie and Harrison Ford, the actor, was the main character, and it was called Regarding Henry. And Henry, he was a, a really evil type lawyer, you know. He's he he was a bad lawyer, you know, and he create you know, created I'm not he was a good lawyer <laughs> creating bad consequences. <laughs> it, you know, he wasn't helping people, but except like he would help this one beat up this one, you know, that 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 was his lawyer job. And he was in a, a convenience store uh, and there was a robbery and the robber shot him in the head and he lost his memory. He, he, he just he had lo he lost his memory. And then on the healing part, he wanted to know, well, wait, who am I? What am I? And so he had to go back and review like his law cases. He went back and saw his relationship with his family. And he looked at all these things and said, oh, geez. <laughs> No wonder, you know, that I was not a good person. So now he has, guess what? A new life. So he says, well, then I don't want that. This is what I want. And he created the life and he left the lawyer business and he took his family and the family and they all became one and love and blah, blah, blah. And I said, what was the point? He lost the program. Then guess what? Had an opportunity to write a whole new program because it wasn't there. So he writes a program of what? Joy, love, happiness, health, all this stuff. Then guess what? The end of the movie, he walks off. He's a whole, he's somebody totally different. Now, I don't want people to get a bullet in the head, but I want people to know you can change the program. And I go, uh, let, let me emphasize, I, I love this. This is a fact, okay? The Catholic Jesuits, um, they have told their followers for 400 years, they said, Give me a child until it is seven and I will show you the man. Guess what? That's what science now recognizes. Seven years is the programming and 95% of your life 
is the program. So if I can pro if I could program your first seven years, I own the rest of your life. And I go, that's when they developed Catholic school. Let's program them. Okay. But today the programming is much more powerful than even they could think of. You can see a, an infant who can hardly walk with an iPad. I go, well, that's programming, folks. <laughs> and I go, yeah, it's, it's much more greater than you think. So I say, so what's the point? We've all been programmed. Yes. That the programs came from other people that are passed down family to family to family. The idea, I mentioned it earlier, I'll bring it back up right now. There is not one gene that causes cancer. There's no gene. You have that gene, you have cancer. There's no gene that does that. I go, and I mentioned, well, where's it coming from? I said, adopted child goes into the family where there's cancer and is programmed with behavior that causes cancer. Cancer is not caused by a gene. It's caused by behavior. Dysfunctional behavior, of course. And, and I say, so why is that important? It's like, well, if you want to cure cancer, you don't kill the cells. They're the result of the cancer. That's not the cause of the cancer. The cause of the cancer is where did it go wrong in the program? That's where the cause of the cancer came from. And I go, all of this is what? 1927, quantum physics, consciousness is creating your life experience. If you don't like your life experiences, it's because your consciousness is not supporting a good life. Ah, we keep coming back to the same place, Madeline. We keep coming back to change the program. Exactly. Yeah. And I'm curious to hear your thoughts on like if if our genes are controlled by the environment uh, or yeah. at least like the expression of the genes. Um, how I would like to hear you speak on like what what would you say the environment consists of and how can we and how and how can we do to uh, to work with the environment in the best way possible to yes. to not make these diseases uh, sort of happen in our bodies you get to the point those are good questions so now I have something to talk about <laughs> uh, okay the environment controls the cells I go yes it does I go there's an outside environment outside of my skin. What's going on in the world? That's an environment. But I also have under the skin a different environment because the cells are not living in the outside. They're living in the blood, the, the fluid, the culture medium. So I go, so what's the point about that? I go, <clears throat> then I'm not asking what's controlling the outside environment. I'm asking what controls the inside environment, the blood. And that's what I brought back up again. It, the cells don't see the real world. The cells see what you think about the world. Two people can be in the exact same place in the exact same environment and have totally different responses. And one person, oh, this is a scary world. The other one, oh, this is okay. And I go, well, then guess what? <clears throat> Their cells have two different responses. Not the outside world. That's separate. It's the inside world that is based on what? What they believe. And I say, why? Because it's the belief that creates the chemistry. And if you, uh, it's the environment inside the body that determines your genetics, not the outside. It's the inside. I go, yeah, but that environment is separated. Yeah, the skin. <laughs> My cells are in another environment, not out here. But they have to deal with what's out here. My liver cell has to work if it's a good environment or a bad environment. It has to know what to do. So I say, how does the liver cell know what's going on? And the answer is, what am I thinking? Because my thoughts are going to be turned into the chemistry of that environment. My thoughts control my genes because my thoughts create the chemistry in my blood, which controls my genes. And all of a sudden it goes, oh, that's a different environment. That's why people go, well, I live in the most wonderful environment. Why am I sick? And I go, that's the outside environment. My question is what's going on in the inside environment under the skin. Skin is separating you from the environment. My liver cell does no idea what the real environment is. My liver cell only knows what I'm telling it the environment is because my thoughts are translated into the chemistry, which controls the genes. And that's is, there, how it works. is there a risk, like if we're born into a family, for example, with with cancer or other diseases or dysfunctional yes. relationships or whatever 
and and then we get to and we sort of uh, learn this belief that you're sharing with us this perspective yes. of how we can control with our thoughts the way our genes are expressed yeah um is there a risk that that thought and that idea become something uh, terrifying you know like so that it becomes something that oh i can't think fearful thoughts you know so so that it becomes something that hijacks our system but do you understand my question yeah well look <clears throat> your thoughts are based on the life experience at the moment number one if, if my loved one dies i'm going to be an emotional problem for a period of time the issue is how long do I keep that emotional problem? Okay, grief is important. If someone dies, yes, there's important for you to experience the grief, which is chemistry. Grief is chemistry. <laughs> I go, so what? I go, but there's a period of time where you have to replace that grief because if it stays, then you're chronically going to be in the same place and never get out of it again. So the idea is, yeah, grief is important. Don't Don't avoid grief. But get beyond grief. You have to get beyond the grief. Because if you don't, then your whole life is now colored by the grief. And that's not the life you want. But a lot of people do it because they don't even know that their thoughts are creating this. And their most of their thoughts are grief. And, oh, it's not working. Life's not good. I don't like life. I go, don't say that. <laughs> because that picture is going to be translated into the chemistry. And I said, if you don't like life, what do you think the chemistry is going to be? It's going to kill you. Why? I don't like it. Okay, you don't need it. Goodbye. That's, you know, it's as simple as that. Uh, <clears throat> does the mind thought control this? Well, let me give a scientific reality because that's still new age. And I go, it's not new age, folks. You've heard of something called the placebo effect. I go, placebo. I said, what's that? I said, well, a person has an illness <clears throat> and the doctor says, I have the greatest new drug, this pill. This pill is going to heal you. It's brand new. It's great. All that. You take the pill and you get better. But then you find out the pill was a sugar pill, a placebo. And then I say, well, then what healed you? The sugar? No. Your belief that I'm going to get better because the pill is going to make me better. It was not the pill. It was the belief of the pill that made you better. That's uh, up to, you know, minimum third, one third of all healing is just a belief. And mm -hmm. it could be up to two thirds of all healing. It's just what the person is believing about what's gonna happen to them. And that's called positive thinking. Placebo is positive. Yeah, I'm gonna get better. That's positive. Is the pill going to make me better? Well, if you believe it, it will. But if the sugar is a sugar pill, then it turns out, well, it was if you believe it, that was the point. Okay, so that's positive thinking. And everybody's told, yeah, no, I've heard about that. I go, no, that's a scientific reality. So that's a real thing. Your thought heals you. Okay. What I need to bring up and people don't ever talk about it because we're always talking about positive thinking, positive belief, positive belief. And I go, what about negative belief? I go, and this, please, it's called nocebo in medicine. I go, what does it mean? A negative belief can cause any disease and a negative belief you can just die from the fact you believe you're going to die. So in other words, positive belief can heal you, negative belief can kill you. I go, what? It's still based on the belief. It's the chemistry of the thought translated by the brain that created the result. And it's so important because no one mentions negative beliefs. I go, well, that's the majority of the beliefs that we have are negative beliefs. It's not going to work. This is going to be a problem. This won't happen. I'm a victim. Blah, 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 blah. I go, people don't recognize they have more negative belief than they have positive belief. I go, so what's the point? I say, well, if it's a scale <laughs> and you have more negative than positive, the chemistry of your body is in negative chemistry. And that's where disease is coming from. It's not coming from genes. It all starts up here. And then that goes back to the quantum physics. And, and I said 1927 was when that was put into quantum physics. There was a more recent article in the last 10 years in the journal Nature. Now, Nature is one of the most prestigious scientific journals on planet Earth. And there was an article by a physicist, Richard Kahn Henry, and the article is called The Mental Universe. 
And I don't even need to read the article. You could just read the last sentence because quantum physics is matter and energy are not separate. They're all energy actually, okay? So when you say matter, it's not really matter, it's energy. It's immaterial. That's the word, immaterial, made out of not matter, not made of energy, okay? So here's the last sentence. The universe is immaterial. It's mental and spiritual. Live and enjoy. I go, the most prestigious scientific journal in the world has an article that says our lives are mental and spiritual. I go, yes, that's the physics that was here since 1927. And we're still not paying attention to it. And it's the mechanism of the universe. And it goes, yep, <laughs> uh, it, it's mental and spiritual. And that was the second part. Because I said the first part that changed my life was epigenetics. The signal comes from the environment. And then very quickly, a thought came into my head because I work with immune systems. I do immunology and stuff like that. And um, I'm going to tell you a fact, which you were probably aware of. You cannot put your cells into another person's body or your organ into another person's body because their immune system will say, that's foreign, that's not us, and the immune system will get rid of it. So now I got a very interesting thought that says, well, there must be something that the immune system is looking at because the immune system recognizes the physical world. And I say, well, then there must be something my cells have different than your cells. Because my cells, if I put them into your body, you're going to reject it as not self. Your cells, if you put in my body, my immune system will say not self. Here's the cell. And I started to look and I recognized on the surface of our cells, there are proteins like antennas, like television antennas that used to be. And there's a whole set of them. They're called self receptors. They're on the outside of the cell. I said, so they're receivers of what a signal i go yeah but what's the signal a broadcast a vibration an energy i say what's the point i said my antennas pick up this signal your antennas pick up that signal everybody's antennas picks up a different signal like a radio station no two people get the same signal you can't exchange your parts I go, so what's the point? I saw that and I saw the mechanism. I saw the signal, the antennas. I saw it and I said, oh my God, my identity, your identity is not in the cell. It's a broadcast that is picked up by the antennas and played through your cells. What's the point? The people we are, the consciousness, the awareness that we are, is a broadcast. The body is just playing it. So it's like a television set. So there you are looking at me. You're watching the Bruce television, playing a program. We're playing the Bruce show right now. I love and it. <laughs> I go, what, what does that mean? So look at it this way. Your body is like a receiver, a television set, playing a program, which is a broadcast called the field in physics. But in, in, in metaphysics, it's called spirit. Spirit is an energy broadcast. It's in the field. And you have antennas that are picking up your spirit, but not anybody else's spirit, because that's your station. You have your own station. So I look at this, I go, oh, oh my God. I'm not in here. I'm the broadcast. I go, why is that? Think about it this way. You're watching a TV show. The TV breaks. What do we say? TV is dead. Oh, yeah, it's dead. No, it's not working anymore. Is the broadcast still there? Of course it's still there. How do you know? Get another TV. Tune it to the same station. And the program is back, but in a different TV. Does the TV have to be male or female? I go, that's the TV. That's not you. You're the broadcast. Does it have to be white, brown, black? red yellow i said no that's the tv that's not you you're the broadcast and i realized for the first time in my life is like oh my god spirituality 
it's physics it's energy fields and their energy fields are everywhere they did a study with um an astronaut brian o'leary they put some of his cells into a test tube and they moved the test tube 350 miles away here's brian o'leary here's the test tube with his cells in it 350 miles away they put a device to read the energy of the cells in the test tube and so the researcher now has a television set split screen one half brian o'leary live the other half the energy reading from the cells 350 miles away guess what when brian had an experience instantly instantly 350 miles away the cells lit up I go, whoa what does that mean well brian o'leary is a spirit an energy field and he had an emotion which affected the energy field but the energy field is everywhere so 350 miles away his cells with what the antennas are recording the energy field at the same time he interfered with it i guess what was the point spirit is everywhere the broadcast is everywhere but wherever the television set is that's where it comes into reality and then i'll close with this part because this is really cool being a science guy i ask myself why not just be the spirit why have a body and the answer came from the cells inside my body i could feel the answer go whoop. and the answer listen to the answer i asked why have a body why not just be a spirit and the body asked me question bruce if you're just a spirit what does chocolate taste like oh that is now if you think about it that is the most deepest important answer in the world why i have eyes that makes energy visible okay i have a nose i can take the chemistry and make it make a, a sense a tongue yeah what does chocolate taste like that's chemistry affecting my nerves which send a signal to my brain which goes back to my source our life experiences are coming through this suit and I go, why is that important? Because you're not the suit. You're the broadcast in the suit. But it's an important suit. It's not just something extra. It gives you sensation. You know what the big one? Love. Love is a sensation from the body, the chemistry, the energy. And I say it sends back to source. So if you don't have a body, I say to your spirit, tell me about love. And you'll give me a technical answer. But if you have a body, you also give me a, an emotional answer. Oh, it feels, love is a feeling. Oh, well, where'd you get the feeling? The body. So all of a sudden, I, two things just happened to me. Boom, just like that. One, I can't die. Why? I'm not in here. I'm up there with the broadcast. Two, reincarnation. Yes an embryo comes with the same set of antennas that you have you're back but male female race that's that's the television that's not you okay and then the reason why do i have this and the answer is because we can create you are creating i say what can you create and i say well when you're doing it right you create the honeymoon you create heaven on earth oh that's where heaven is yes we came here to create it but your program took away your power we're creating other people's programs we're not creating your program you're creating what other people programmed you what your parents programmed you what your religion programmed you what your doctor programmed you are you living your life i go nope i'm living the program 95 percent of the day and all of a sudden it goes well then the heaven that we could create the honeymoon doesn't work for a lot of people uh, and let me add this, this is real important <clears throat> does the honeymoon require another person i go no you can have the honeymoon effect with a pet 
you can share your love with a pet okay oh you can be a chef why because you're creating the chef creates okay the gardener you put your hands in the soil and what are you doing you're creating a garden i go those creative efforts are a disconnect from uh, the general programming because you're doing it live you're putting a garden in you're not thinking about what happened yesterday you're you're oh i'm putting the seeds in the dirt <laughs> all of a sudden i go wow guess what that that's the that's a honeymoon why you enjoy you enjoy i love doing this i go that's the important part i use the honeymoon example as couples because that's where most people ex shock their world when they experience it but i need people to know is you don't need to have another person have a honeymoon mm -hmm. you just need to do something that gives you so much joy and happiness that you stay present stop mm -hmm. thinking while you're engaging in these processes that's a honeymoon that means i'm not no, i'm not playing a program i'm enjoying my life i go ah that's the honeymoon oh that, that's why we're here so then that's what led me to the final conclusion of i'm an immortal spirit i'm an energy playing in the field that i have an opportunity to come into a virtual reality suit that allows me to see smell touch feel have emotions and experiences and allows me to create i go that's called heaven i go yeah there it is <laughs> when you lose the suit it's not the same heaven anymore the nose is gone i can't smell the chocolate or taste it i get this gone. why well i have the experience of it so i have a memory of it but i can't do it again why if you don't have this machine you can't experience it so the whole idea is what this is heaven we came here to create the beautiful world that is in our conscious wishes and desires and yet we're creating other people's world because they programmed us in that first seven years in a way that has taken away our power and living in fear and the belief of a darwinian theory that fear is your survival is based on you beating the other person that's a bad game to play in this world because that's not survival that's self-destruction mm. survival is supporting each other yeah and recognizing I don't care what race you have you're in why that, that your body is is just the suit okay uh religion my opinion bruce lipton's opinion it's just a bunch of rules <laughs> where they're trying to tell you how to live in heaven but at the same time they limit your ability they separate you from god you can't be separated from god god and you are the electric information coming into this brain right now and nobody can get between that broadcast and your brain unless you let them and then the idea is what what will make it easy to control you and the answer is this fear because when you're in fear you feel you have no power and when you have no power you will surrender to somebody who says i know how to do it and you will give up your life to follow their program and once you did that you lost your you lost your life fear mm -hmm. caused us to lose our life and today with the world falling apart most people are in fear it's falling apart i go no no you don't even know the real fear we've been telling you for 20 years in science you're going extinct i say how long is that going to be a hundred years a thousand years i go no how about within the next two decades that's when nasa scientists put out an article and they said within the next two decades there is and let me uh, use the word irreversible meaning it's not going back within the next two decades there's an irreversible destruction of our current civilization it's falling apart i see it falling apart every day you do too watch the news surf the web look out your window the world's in a state of crazy and i go it has to be because we can't keep it, it would be crazy if it just continued the way it was going because it's coming to an end we don't have the resources mm -hmm. can't do this anymore we have to change our lives and the change of life will change some of the old stories that have kept us uh, uh, from really experiencing life 
uh, the Me Too generation, where women are saying, say, wait a minute, there's no second class around here at all. We're all in the same class. Let's get back online. Race issues that are coming up. Yeah, uh, we've not talked about them for years and years and years because we believe it's not there, but it's still there. And it says, no, you can't move into the future with those race issues. You can't move into the future uh, with, with the way we are living right now. We, we, we've got, um, we can't go into the future keeping, uh, keep destroying the environment. There's not that, you know, we have to take care of what's left and rebuild it. Actually, that's what the future is about. And, and the idea is we're facing this evolution. Hmm. If it does not fall apart, then the reality is the, the civilization is going to collapse. And if we don't have a vision of where it's going to go, it's going to be a terrible ending to this world. But there is a destination. There hmm. is. How do we make the garden again? Because we came from the garden. The garden is not a battleground. A garden is cooperation. Hmm. Every plant every insect everything in that garden is working in harmony to create a garden okay and the reality is we've turned the garden into a battleground so you think ahead. that so you think there's hope then oh i i live with it every minute i say well how do i know it says i'm living it right now i'm not waiting until the end i'm living the life of what harmony i uh, taking care of my environment the best i can uh, outside environment take care of my inside environment live in harmony with the people around me, spread love wherever we are. Guess what? I'm surrounded by the people that have the same vibe as me, which means what? I don't see the scary people. I don't even know where, I know they're out there. I saw it on the news, but I don't know them. <laughs> they're not in my world. Why? Because I live in a world with different consciousness, different energy fields, different beliefs. And these people around me are living the same kind of harmony that I'm living. When you really fall in love, guess what? You meet other people who are in love. Why? Because it's a vibe. And we get into that vibe. And the world has to move from the vibe of self-destruction into the vibe of, of harmony and garden. And we're in the middle right now. So you're talking about how like we are getting our programs for uh, from our parents and the culture around us and all of these different ways but so i'm curious to hear when it comes to parenting because i know you write and talk a lot about conscious parenting yes. so so if we and and of course this could be like a whole a whole new topic to dive into but i'm curious to hear your perspective on if we are people who are looking to to raise a child into this world yes uh, it's the most important thing in the whole world yeah so what are some of the ways to do it more consciously and to program our, okay. our kids into something healthy okay bottom line is this a child is a reflection of its program its program comes from you as a parent the problem that we've faced up to now is that parents act like coaches on a sports team i said what does that mean i said let's say a player on the team isn't doing well what does the coach do he doesn't go, oh, please do better. No, the coach goes, that's not good enough. Who do you think you are? You don't deserve to be on this team. Well, a child above the age of seven understands, oh, the coach wants me to do better. Okay, he's, you know, he's yelling at me because I'm not doing better. I have to do better. Now I say, what if that coach is talking to a child under age seven? I say, oh, the child under age seven is not conscious. They're recording. I say, okay, and the parent says, that's not good enough. You don't deserve this. Who do you think you are? You're not lovable. They didn't mean that for the child's whole life. They just said, at this moment, you're acting like a child. <laughs> and, and I want you not to act like a child. So you don't deserve that. You know, and I go, yeah, but what did the child under the seven take away from that interaction? The answer is a recording. I said, what was the recording? I do not deserve. I am not lovable. I am not this. I am not that. The parent's intention was to act like the coach to make the player play better. But if the player isn't conscious to understand the meaning, then it just downloads what the words are. So if you want to be a parent, the most important thing you have to recognize, number one, is every time you talk to that child and you think that child, that little infant that's still in the diapers that can make a word and all that is just there. I go, no, the brain has been recording since it was actually in the last trimester of pregnancy. And 
well, you think that that child is just sitting in the, that little whatever, and and you're talking about that child. That child is downloading everything you just said. That child downloads everything from the beginning. It knows who the mother is uh, instantly. And by the end of a week, the, the, the child will distinguish the mother's face and the father's face from everybody else's face on the planet. They'll know those two faces. And in two weeks, they'll read the face. I said, what do you mean? They can read if you're happy, angry, sad. The face changes. They feel the vibration. They connect the vibration to the face. Anger looks like, you know, I say, what's the point? Well, then people don't recognize as parents, especially when the baby first is crawling and can move. And across, if the baby is, let's say, in, on the floor in a living room and it comes to something, a chair. And the first thing the baby does, and parents don't know this, is the baby will look at the mother. Why? Is this good or bad? How do I know? The mother's face. Mother's face. Yeah. Okay. It comes near the stairway, going downstairs. It gets at the edge of the stair. Look back at the mother's face. The mother's going. Oh. The baby immediately knows. Don't go there. <laughs> because it has to get the cues of what's life about because it has no program. It doesn't know yet. So it says, how does it know? And it says, it's connected to the mother and the father energetically just like a pet a pet reads your energy not your words it knows if you're mad it knows if you're happy it knows if you're afraid it has different behavior based on what not the words the energy the baby like the pet reads energy first then learns language second so the idea about it is you want to be a good parent number one is this you always always Anytime that baby is around, you always talk about how wonderful that baby is, how powerful she is, how intelligent. And, and you're using these words and you're going, infant doesn't know what I, I said, don't worry. The brain has just downloaded the words. They're going to come back. When that baby starts to get a little older, those are the words that will make the behavior. And I say, yeah, but it's an infant. I go, yeah, it's the recording. It's not being able to play back, but at that stage, it's recording. So if you want to raise a child, the most important thing you do is you just keep telling how smart and powerful and intelligent and wonderful and what gift it is to our world. And you keep saying all these things. Why? Because if that becomes the subconscious program of that child, that program will make that child successful beyond anything. Mm. And, There's and a, Yeah, go ahead. And so if we end up having programs that are destructive or harmful or in any way like stopping us from living the life that we desire, um, what are some of the ways we can do to reprogram and to integrate new beliefs into our system? Oh, that'll cost you five dollars. <laughs> <No. laughs> that, that's a bonus. <laughs> no. OK, so here, here's the point. First of all, how do you know what your program is? Why? Because you were programmed even before you were born. So I said, say, what, what did you learn before you were born? You go, I don't know. I said, you were programmed a whole year from zero to one. What program did you get then? You go, I don't know. You were programmed another whole year from one to two. Number from two to three, you were still programming. I go, you don't know what your programs are consciously because the conscious mind was not working when the programs were going in. Okay. Then I said, well, then how do I know what my programs are? And then here comes the answer. It's so simple. 95% of your life is coming from the program. Your life is a printout of your program. Like, what does that mean? I go, the things that come into your life that you like, they come in because you have a program to accept those things. But for those things that you want and you work hard and you struggle, and you make effort. I'm sweating. I'm gonna. I'm working real hard. I'm gonna make this happen. Why are you working so hard? And the answer is, whatever that destination you're seeking, whether it's relationship, job, health, whatever. If you're having a struggle to get there, it's because there's a program that doesn't support that. 
when you have a program that supports you, you have it. And if you have a program that doesn't support you, you don't have it. That's how it works, okay? So look at your life. And the first thing is, well, where is it not working? Relationships, community, health. And I go, okay, now you, you, you can start to say, well, where's my program? I say, wherever you're struggling, it's because it's a program. The universe didn't make struggle. You made struggle. You made struggle because you didn't see the program that's causing struggle. But you see the result, so that's where I said, then you know what the program is because you see the result. Now you want to change the program. That is the important question. And here's how it works. The brain is a computer. The keyboard is the conscious mind. Why? I can type anything I want onto my keyboard. But inside is the hard drive. That's where the programs are. And I go, so what's important about the programs? I go, it's a hard drive. I go, why is this important? And this is really cool. Because how many of us talk to ourselves saying, don't do this behavior, trying to give ourselves a lesson. Don't, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. I'm not doing that. And then you do it. <laughs> and, and you get frustrated because you keep telling yourself you're not going to do it. And I say, well, here's the problem. The program is in a hard drive. There's nobody in the hard drive. If you could do this, then talk to your computer and just say, I want to change the program. Give me a new program. And I say, how long of talking to the computer will the program change? I go, it'll never change. Why? There's nobody in there to hear you say that. It's just a program. So the first important thing is this. It's a program like in a computer. I say, well, how do you get the programs? There are two natural ways you get the program. Number one, the mind is at a lower vibration than consciousness called theta. And theta is just below consciousness. I go, what's theta? Hypnosis. Oh, so the first seven years, your mind was in a state of hypnosis and downloaded behavior just by watching. Okay, cool. What if you can get back into theta? I go, yeah, well, that's called hypnosis. I go, do I have to see a hypnotherapist? I go, no, because the brain vibration, the higher the vibration, the more conscious, the lower the vibration, the less conscious. At work, you're at a high vibration, and that's called beta. That's thinking, working, focusing. You come home and relax, the vibration slows down. Now it's calm consciousness. That's called alpha vibration. The moment you fall asleep, the moment where I'm gone. I'm sleeping. The brain goes into the next vibration, theta. So it says every night when you fall asleep, the moment you fall asleep, the next activity of the brain is below consciousness. Why? Consciousness is sleeping. It's not there. The next vibration, theta, is a period, a short period of time. I go, so why is that important? Well, theta is hypnosis. And I go, so what? I go, rewriting program number one. Put earbuds or earphones on at night with a program playing what you want to be true in your life. They're called self-help programs, programs that um, you can make more money. You can make better relationship. You can improve your health. You put them on just before you go to sleep. Put the earphones on. And then what your job is to do is to go to sleep because <laughs> the moment you go to sleep, Whatever's playing through the earphones is not coming into the conscious. You don't hear it anymore. It's gone. You're sleeping. Where's it going? I said, oh, it's going into the subconscious. You are programming the subconscious while you sleep. But it's only a short period of time, so you have to do it a number of times over and over again. And then one day you'll just wake up and the program would have been in there programmed and now you don't have to do it anymore because it's a program. That's called self-hypnosis. You can do that at night. That is the period when it works best because you can put the, the sound into the ears that the moment you fall asleep, you do not hear the sound anymore consciously, but the subconscious is programming, okay? That's way number one, self-hypnosis. Number two, you still learn, learn programs after age seven, complex programs. You learn how to drive a car. You learn how to play a music instrument. You learn how to play games. You learn how to do this. You learn how to do a job. I say, how would you learn these habits? These become habits. Because 
driving a car if you've never been in a car i don't want to drive with you until you get the habit of how to drive the car uh you know you want to be a pilot i'm sure not getting in a plane with you it's nice to have the desire to be a, a pilot but you need a program to be a pilot and i say how do you get programs after age seven and the answer is repetition practice that's what you do practice the new behavior uh I, in the new age circle they say fake it till you make it and i go what does that mean i say well let's say you're not a happy person i say you want to be a happy person i say yeah i said what do you need to do i say all day long say to yourself wherever you are as many times as they, i am happy i am happy you're saying this to yourself you could be miserable the world could really stink i go yeah but just say to yourself i am happy i am happy repetition will lead to a point where one day you wake up and you don't have to say i am happy because the repetition has programmed you to wake up happy and then all of a sudden now you got that new program both those re the repetition and self-hypnosis are time you have to repeat 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 there the new one and this is the one i really the important one i want people to understand is called energy psychology what's that I go that's a different psychology than your parents knew <laughs> it's not a story about how who did what to who and how that who your friend did and what your mom said and what your dad said and i don't care what how that how you got the program that's the kind of cognitive therapy let's go back and review i go i don't need to go back and review why i have the program I don't have to go back and learn how I got the program. I have the program. So I don't need to go backwards. I need to go forwards. I go, so what do you do? I say, look at your life. Where are you struggling? You're struggling not because you can't have something. You're struggling because your program doesn't support it. So I say, then what do you want to do? You want to change that program. I say, well, energy psychology is a process that generally induces what is called a, a super learning state. I say, what's a super learning state? A kid under seven has super learning state. Whatever they see, download it. They learned it. Just like, boom, they've seen it. It's downloaded. That's it. I say, you can get back into that mindset with energy psychology to that mind, the way the mind was working before age seven. And if you can get back into that set, guess what? You can rewrite the program in five, 10 minutes, walk away and have a completely different program. Why? How long did it take the child under seven to learn the program? Just had the experience at once and then the program was learned. I say, if you get into energy psychology, you can then in, induce a super learning and download new behavior in minutes and walk away a different person. It's a miracle. It works. I love it because, boy, did it change my entire life as oh. well. And thousands of people that I know from experiences by traveling around the world that have used these processes and completely changed the character of their lives in minutes. I said, well, what are these processes? And I go, my website, this is very simple, brucelipton.com. On the website is what we call belief change modalities, belief change. And I have maybe 25 different ways that energy psychology, different types of energy psychology, modalities, different versions. Uh, you can read a, about each one, a little paragraph, and then there's a website. You can connect to it. So the point is this. In today's world, time is very important. And the new version of energy psychology is a, a way that we can rapidly change our belief and get into a new role fast because we don't have a lot of time on this planet to waste anymore so my suggestion is go to the website brucelifton.com check out those modalities find one that interests you and then go to the website and follow up on it why does it work hey man i'm living let's, it let's, right let's find it out i didn't let's have this. Out. I, I didn't have this for 40 years i didn't wake up with oh wow I have another day. I'm still here. Let's go out and have some fun. And fun doesn't mean just play. My work is fun. Oh, everything is fun. My food is fun. My music is fun. Mm.
Oh, it's it's so beautiful to see you shine, Bruce, and see your <laughs> the fire that lights you up when you talk about this topic. It's so beautiful, and I'm so grateful for your wisdom and your perspectives and everything. And and I do feel like before letting you go today, yeah. um, I would love to hear like if you were able to reach the whole world for yes. 30, sec 30 seconds, what is something that you would like to say to them or maybe do with them like 30 seconds? What's your message? My My message is simply this. How does this system work? How does life work? What is life? Where does it come from? And if you are just to understand, you start to understand the nature of spirit as an energy in quantum physics, and it's not new age. If you understand programming as the way you are living your life, then you can understand, well, if it's programming, then something called reprogramming is possible, and that gives you the power. What people have to end up with is what quantum physics said. It's our consciousness that is creating this reality. If you're not living the reality that you want, you don't change the world. You change the consciousness, the world will change automatically after that. And that's the best part. I don't have to change the world. I just have to change me. And the world will change. Mm. And it does. And it works. And it's so beautiful that I I, can, I can't contain it. I can't contain uh, it. It's because so, so beautiful. It's magic. It's magic to be alive. <sighs> Oh, thank you, Bruce, for blessing us with your energy and your wisdom. It's been my honor and my privilege to sit down with you for these 90 minutes. So thank you so much. I want to thank you so very much. And, and also want to add, boy, you had some really good questions. I should have just stopped and said, you asked a question because every one of your questions was so seriously important mm. that I was excited when you asked. Oh, good question. <laughs> good point. Good point. That's, I'm grateful. I want to say how much I appreciate you and mm. providing this environment this opportunity mm. and more important i want to thank the viewers i want yes. to thank those people that are listening to this program i want to thank them because those are the people that are the power people that they can change the world and if we work together community not com uh, competition community then the world in front of us is a honeymoon mm. and a honeymoon is heaven on earth and i say don't wait till you die, folks. Don't be like my stepfather, Phil, and wake up two days before you die and realize you didn't have any fun. You better start having fun now because yes. it's given to us. Thank you for being here with us today, for showing up for the expansion of your own mind and your own heart in this space. If you enjoyed this conversation, I would love it if you took a moment to share this conversation on your story and tag me so that we can keep the conversation going even after the end of this episode. And another way to support the show is to leave a review in the app where you're listening. I'm so looking forward to hear your reflections, your perspectives and insights after listening to this conversation once again thank you for being here with us today <laughs>